when we talk about methods and ways, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I'm talking this evening from the subject, Let Us Go Where the Action Is. And there's plenty of action in this service tonight, and that is that it should be. Amen. For we serve a risen Savior. He's alive. He's not dead. And when we come to worship, we come to celebrate his resurrection. And that's a joyous and a happy time. <laughs> Let us go where the action is. The text, we turn to our Lord's Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, and verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill. and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And then from Proverbs, third chapter, verses five, six, and seven. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. For the past few years, every once in a while, I hear someone say, let's go where the action is. And I'm convinced now that they don't know where it is because when they arrived at where they thought it was, they're still saying, let's go where the action is. Mm -hmm. But I've come to submit to you that where Christ goes, drama goes. A short, sharp, dealing, tree-climbing Jericho businessman <laughs> scrambles down out of a tree and arranges a luncheon when Jesus is about to pass by. <clears throat> a resentful woman is banging dishes in the kitchen while her sister listens to Jesus in the living room. A lame man strides out for the first time in 30 and 8 years, carrying his bedroll on his back. It is impossible to look anywhere in the Gospels and fail to find something exciting and significant happening. Amen. Everywhere that Jesus goes, he makes news. His fame ran like wildfire. Crowds jammed every street that he took. Men climbed up in sycamore trees just to see him pass by. Men got on housetops and broke open roofs to let patients down to him. Women resigned the hope of ever having a face-to-face -face conversation with him. But one woman resigned the hope to take up the next best hope. For she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. People mobbed him during the working hours. Men like Nicodemus came to him by night. Mm -hmm. He was known to preach with his back to the sea so he could retreat safely by boat. Mm -hmm. It was his spectacular and unexplainable appeal that made the Pharisees detest him. Yes, the Pharisees just didn't like him. They didn't like the way he talked. Yes, 
He made himself heard, felt, and remembered. And that to the Pharisees was unforgivable. The Pharisees talked in abstract, but Jesus talks in concrete. The Pharisees were always lengthy. Jesus is always brief. The Pharisees quoted. They had to say what they heard somebody else say. But Jesus simply said, I say unto you. The Pharisees were fearful. Jesus is fearless. The Pharisees were angry. Jesus is kind. The Pharisees were dry and dull, but Jesus is always interested. The Pharisees talked in $10 words. Jesus uses household words. He talks about pearls and plows, boys and bread, weddings and banquets, springtime, fields ready for seed, water, and sun. He has such words in his vocabulary as dishes and brooms, foxes and sparrows, red sunsets, a house built on a hill. He did not come to show the world a clenched fist, but he came with outstretched arms, saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He did not come to build walls, but windows. He did not come to erect barriers, but to build bridges. He came not only to do what men couldn't do, but he came to do what men wouldn't do. Now the disciples could have watched each other's feet in the upper room, but they wouldn't do it. But Jesus came caring for those For whom nobody else cares. Let's go where the action is. Let's take a look. In the conclusion of a long hard battle. Staged in the experience of the colorful and fabulous Solomon. Solomon tried to find the meaning of life. He didn't want to miss out on anything. But yet he wanted to do what was right. And there are a lot of people like that. They want to do what is right, but they don't want to miss out on anything. They want happiness without holiness. They want to be clean, but they hesitate to come clean. They know that God is broadcasting pardon but they're too proud to ask him for it. They want to run. (laughs) With every crowd. They want to walk with the Lord. But yet they want to run with the devil. Now some are looking for life ready made. But life does not come ready made. God gives us existence, and life for each one of us depends upon what we make out of our existence. Success in life can never be a reality if the individual excludes God from the agenda of his existence. Man is so constituted that he needs the help that can come only from God. Civilizations crumble when they eliminate God from their boundaries. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The young people where I serve as pastor came to me some time ago and said, Pastor, leave us alone and let us learn life by experience. Didn't you say... Experience was the best teacher. And I said experience is a good teacher. But many times experience will charge you too much for tuition. Mm-hmm. By the time experience gets through teaching you, mm-hmm. then you're not able to put in practice what you've been taught. 
There is a lesson that we ought to learn from history. And that is men don't learn from history. They don't learn. A man will see another wallowing in his vomit and he will know that that man is drunk. And then he'll go right on and get drunk. A fellow will see his buddy coming in off of a bad trip. And he'll go on and take a similar trip. We just don't learn from history. We want to give the flower of our lives to selfish pursuit. And then we want to hand the stem to God. We want to burn the candle at both ends. And when it's all burned out, then we want to blow the smoke of a misspent life in the face of God. Well, haven't you found out that men die in the midst of their years? The farmer dies and leaves the field half plowed. The banker leaves business still not transacted. The artist dies with unformed figures on his canvas. The tradesman is cut down in the midst of his merchandising. The statesman is arrested with great political measures on his hand. The minister dies with spiritual usefulness undeveloped. Moses died on Pisgah's heights with the promised land stretching out before him. But Solomon is determined to find happiness. And he says, I know where I'll find it. And he tried luxury. Solomon sat on the throne of solid ivory overlaid with gold. He drank from vessels of gold. They pressed the rash wines to his lips. They enrobed him with the purest of purples and embroideries. They cheered him with the sweetest music in that land of hearts. For him royalty had no dominion. Wealth had no luxury and gold had no glitter. Paul was his. Fish pools decorated his parks. Dashing water wheels sprinkled his woodlands. Birds that had been brought from foreign lands glanced and fluttered in the foliage and called back to their mates far beyond the sea. If you'd go out to his stable, you would see 1,400 chariots, 40 stalls of horses, standing in blankets of Tyrian purple, chewing their bits over troughs of gold and waiting to be brought out in front for a grand parade. But Solomon found out that money is no substitute for salvation. Solomon found out you could have plenty in your purse, but nothing in your person. Solomon found out you could be vogue on the outside and vague on the inside. Solomon found out that you could live or breathe a long time without actually living. Solomon found out that you could have a bank account and an empty soul. Now money may buy material things, but it just doesn't buy deep down satisfaction. Now money may buy a house, but it cannot buy a home. You're right. Now, money may buy four years in college, but it cannot buy an education. Money may buy a wife, but it cannot buy love. That's the reason Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moss nor rust doeth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Solomon moved on from luxuries and he tried learning. And everywhere I go, I tell people, irrespective of your age, go and get you some learning. Go get you some learning so other people won't look down on you. And then go and get you some more learning so you won't look down on other people. 
Haven't you noticed if you know a little something, the world doesn't want to give you credit. And if you're not sure about some things, they'll brag on you. When Christopher Columbus left home, he didn't know where he was going. When he got here, he didn't know where he was. When he returned home, he didn't know where he'd been. And we give him credit for discovering America. (laughs) And that that you know, you have to learn to use what you know. You have to learn how to apply. Wisdom comes in knowing how to use what you know. Some years ago, there was a boy whose parents were unlearned and they wanted their son to have educational advantages. They got their little monies together and sent the boy away to school. And after the first year when the boy returned home, he was eager to let his parents know what he had learned in school. That morning the father went out and killed two ducks. The mother dressed these ducks and baled them, baked them real brownly and called them to dinner. The boy said, this is my opportunity to let my parents know what I've learned in school. When they, they were seated at the table, the boy said, Daddy, there are three ducks in that dish. The father said, I didn't kill but two. But the boy said, oh, but there are three ducks in that dish. The mother said, I didn't bake but two. But the boy still insisted that there were three ducks and he set out to try to explain. He said, you see, you take a certain potion from this duck and an equal potion from this duck and put these potions together and this will equal that and this will equal that. And the more he tried to explain, the more confused the father became. So he just bowed his head and said, gracious Lord, We do humbly thank thee for what we are about to receive, for the nourishment of our bodies, for Christ our Redeemer's sake. Amen. And he forked up one duck and put in the mother's plate, and he forked up the other duck and put in his plate, and he said, now you help yourself to that third duck. (laughs) You have to learn how to apply what you know. But Solomon found out that the hand of knowledge just can't dry away tears. Solomon found out there are some doors that a Phi Beta Kappa key cannot unlock. Solomon found out that the mind just can't solve the problems of the heart. Solomon found out that you can have a full head and an empty heart. Knowledge may be power, but it's never peace. I gave myself to knowledge, wisdom, and to know madness and folly. And I perceived that it's a vexation of the spirit. So Solomon moved on from learning, and he tried liquor. He said, I know I can find it in liquor. And there are still people today who think that they can find peace of mind in pills, and they think that joy comes in bottles. When you go to a supermarket and see something on the shelf in a container that says joy, that's a detergent or something you wash dishes with. Joy does not come in containers. And don't let anybody deceive you. There's no happiness in it. A young man came to the office some time ago. And when he entered the door, he was crying, and I knew immediately what was wrong with him. And I said, why do you keep drinking this stuff? Don't you see what it's doing to you? He said, oh, pastor, you just don't understand. I have so many troubles, I have to drink to drown my troubles. He said, brother, you can't drown troubles. Troubles know how to swim. Don't you know when you down trouble over here, it'll rise up over there. Wine is a marker and strong drink is raging and whoever's deceived by it is not wise. Don't let him deceive you. It'll break your home. 
It'll destroy your character. It'll rot your body. Ruin your brain. It dishonors God. Deceives man. And drives him to desperation and death. So Solomon moved on from liquor and he tried lust. The Bible says he married 700 wives and had 300 concubines. His days were characterized by wine, women, and song. And you know, when a man gets ready to try to justify his adulterous acts today, he'll say, look at Solomon. And then while you're bragging on Solomon, I'm wondering what did he do with so many mothers-in-law. <laughs> but Solomon found out that this that desire can turn into disgust. Solomon found out that delight can turn into despair. So now he's old. He walks out on his veranda with his diamond-studded robe glittering in the noonday sun. And he wants to look back over his life and see why hasn't he found the action. How did I miss it? I tried luxuries. I tried learning. I tried liquor. I tried lust. But he concluded all is vanity. <coughs> all of that. There's just nothing to it. It passes away. Then he turned to the Lord. And the first time in his life he found pardon for his past. He found power for the present and he found a bright prospect for the future. But now he's not able to enjoy it. He's got to check in shortly at the gates of eternity. But he leaves on record some words for you and me. So we won't have to make the same mistake he made. To go all of our lives looking for the action and passing it by. Stumbling over the plan of salvation because it's so simple. Solomon said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Whatever it is you're looking for out of life, you'll find it only in Jesus. If you desire life, you must not reject him. If you need light, you must not refuse him. If you crave for love, you must not neglect him. If you pursue joy, you must not omit him. If you want peace, you must not exclude him. If you demand truth, you must not ignore him. If you need power, you must not forsake him. If you long for rest, you must not turn away from him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you can trust him. Because he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You can trust him, for he will never leave you nor forsake you. You can trust him. He's the only one who is all sufficient safe. He is able to supply every need. The reservoir of his resources never recedes. The wisdom of his word never wanes. The vigor of his virtue never varies. The burnish of his beauty never blemishes. The lust of his love never lessens. The prowess of his power never perishes. The fountain of his fullness never fails. You can trust him. 
He is the only one he is, who is a suitable and all-sufficient Savior. His office is manifold. His promise is sure. His mercy is everlasting. His love is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And see, he gives you an invitation to come to him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come without money and come without price. Well, if you say, I want to think it over, come on, let's reason together. If your sins are like scarlet, I'll make them whiter than snow. Come on, just like you are. It's Jesus who says come. The Spirit says come. The Bride says come. Whosoever will, let him come. He isn't going to force it on you. Whosoever will. And I am a witness that if you come to him, he will in no wise cast you out. He'll give you a song to sing in the time of sorrow. He'll walk with you and he'll talk with you and tell you that you are his own. I feel like testifying now. I've seen lightning flash. I've heard thunder roar. I've felt sin's breakers dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, still to fight on. He promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. And I can testify of a truth that he never, never. has left me alone. Never. By night and by day, yes, he's with me always. Yes. He never has left me alone. Let us pray. <laughs> our Father and our God, thank you, thank you that our hope is in thee. Thank you that you provided a way out. Thank you, sir. Of this confused way of life that we are now living. Our Father, help us to look to Thee, the author and finisher of all men's faith. Help us, Lord. And help each one here today. Whatever his relationship is to Thee. If he knows thee, help him to get closer. Help him to get in a hurry. Help him to know how urgent it is that we be up and about our Father's business. And our Father, let us lay aside every weight and sin that doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Yes. Help each person here tonight Help us, Lord. to commit, recommit, dedicate, rededicate. But let everyone get in right relationship with thee. What's in Jesus' name? Amen.